welcome to the Founder Files. I'm Weary. I am Edward Murphy. Yellow person, aren't you? I'm a person. I'm a person from the Founder Files. I'm not. A, I'm not a hologram. Not an android. I'm not an alien. Maybe. Anyway, we have plenty on our roster for today. Besides the news and the spotlight today, we have a few quick tips by none other than. Is it that way? Is it that way I'm facing? Anyway, that the other person's over anyway. here. Oh, hi, Wee Wee. I see you over there. Hi. He's over here on this side. Hello. I didn't know he was over there the whole time. Anyway, besides the quick tips, which is user help today, by the way, we have a review, finding resolution, which we'll get into later. And we have a bit of community feedback, which will actually cover a few different topics. Um, a few things which Murphy considered beating to death. <laughs> yeah, we're going to quickly go through it. So yeah, and a couple of other things that uh, make our interest really, and a couple of plugins at the end. Woo! Hey, I think I hear some news. Let's go into it. And welcome to the news segment. This is where we cover Foundry news, not Lockbox news. Though Lockboxes are cool, I do want to mention Lockboxes. You're not are having cool. that Lockbox podcast. I know we discussed that way back in episode gonna, one, but you're not having it. I want to have that podcast. We should just, you know what? Let's tap on an, an end segment. We can talk about the, the Dominion yacht Lockbox. Sales. You're not having the yacht sales. Well, yacht sales are pretty much down and like out. Maybe because it's winter, but I don't know. That that podcast was a terrible idea. But the Lockbox one could totally work. Anyway. So we've got some rumors of spotlight changes coming in. If you've been like watching Twitter and listening to uh, some other podcasts, it seems like there's going to be plans to change the spotlight. If you don't know how the spotlight works, we've covered it in past episodes, but basically when you submit your mission for spotlighting, it's locked. You can no longer edit it, which has made some Foundry authors, pointing at me right now, not want to submit. But a lot of other ones have already. So, But uh, the problem is when you it gets locked off, you can't edit it anymore. Now, some people have been making copies of their own missions so they can edit that copy, and it's a good idea for that, but it seems like Cryptic was had the idea, and Daniel Stahl mentioned it, that you were supposed to get your own copy of the mission afterwards, and that hasn't happened. So it sounds like Cryptic's working on a way right now to make it that you do get your own copy to edit, and at any time you can resubmit that one and go, oh, look, I've updated it. Could you guys switch them out? And they go, sure. So it's, it's nice to see that they're working on that because, of course, they want Foundry authors to, to feel good about submitting their missions, so they want to make it as easy as possible for Foundry authors to submit their missions. But anyway, that's not all the news we got this week. We've got a spotlight. Storm Clouds by Dark Frontiers. A level requirement of 31 plus, set amid the tumultuous intrigues of a dis dissident group known as the Trumvirate, seeking to bring an end to Chancellor Jimpok's reign. A ruthless adversary has arisen from the ashes of Romulus. And it's a Cleon mission. It's a Cleon. I can say half of those words because of the way they are. I don't know. It Actually, the mission summary was much longer on the site, I think. It was a few paragraphs. I was like, um, I'm just going to do the first one here. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> Probably a good idea, it, yeah. it fits. They usually are just like one paragraph, but it looked like from on their site, it was multiple ones. So I guess because it's a... I find, it, I find it more than a coincidence. You, you bring out the one paragraph, which I can't say a half of. Conspiracy? I think not. But it's his fault. Yeah, it's or my is, fault. Or is it that way? It's, it's somebody's fault. But anyway, whichever way we're going, I know which, where we're going to get to next. It is user tips, quick tips. This week on quick tips, user help. This is where you tell your player where they have to go, what they have to do. It's basically your mission's instructions, and it's a really important part of technical. Probably the most important part of user help is letting a player know where to go to start the mission. This is usually included most times in the dialogue, but if a player picks up the mission, logs out, and logs back in, the only thing they're going to see is your mission name and then basically the map section title. There's always a, a, an overall name you can give to a map. Not the map name necessarily, but the part of the mission that takes place on that map. The trick is to name that the system of where you're going to. So Instead of just saying, uh, Jemadar, steal the Ketracel White, or something like that, you want to be more creative, of course, but you want to say, like, go to the Karat system, where the mission's taking place. And that that's a really easy way to get a player to the start location for the mission. 
Now when you're playing through a mission, you want the objectives to be clearly labeled and easy to understand. If you're trying to come up with creative and interesting ways to say uh, a certain part of the mission, like say you have to talk to diplomats and they're all troubled and stuff, and you just say, troubled diplomats, that doesn't really tell a player what they have to do for that, for that objective. Instead, you just want to say, go talk to the diplomats, because that's what they have to do. Those, in those instructions are meant to be the basic instructions for a player, especially for someone who's skipping through the dialogue. You might be including what to do in the dialogue, but do realize there are people who just skip right through that, and this is the way they get their instructions for a mission. Also, be sure to always include decent-sized waypoints and stuff like that, because if it's too small or they can't see it, stuff like that, they're going to get stuck and drop the mission and give it a one-star. Beyond including these in the mission objectives, it's also good to restate your mission objectives in the dialogue directly, maybe using the green font. If you've played through Cryptic's missions, they do this several times throughout a mission. That way, when a player leads, reads through, they immediately see what they have to do, and they don't even have to glance over at the right-hand screen to see what they have to do next. Also, though, if you do want to get creative with delivering the instructions to a player, and just include it in the story. Instead of just saying, oh, you need to go do this puzzle, have an NPC tell them they need to go do the puzzle, of course, in a story creative way. Those are some quick tips on user help. Next week we cover boundary limitations. And on to our review for this week. Finding resolution by a certain AJ Stoner, which we've mentioned in a couple of weeks. An average star rating of 4.26. 1,669 players, as of this recording, of course. And it is a part one of two-part mission. It's a long mission with a two-hour play time. Two hour yeah. in one. So leave a large window available for playthrough. I think I completed it in an hour and a half. So it's not exactly two hours, but that's what he listed it as. Depends, it depends how fast you read and how good you are at the combat. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of an average reader. I really is a fast reader. I'm average, and a slow reader is gonna ha probably hit the yeah, tower. You're just horrible at combat as well. So that goes for it. I was pretty good at combat. I only died on the ground this time. So shut up. But anyway, <laughs> the starship has gone missing in the neutral zone. The resolution, huh? I wonder if that goes with the title in any way. We'll find out. But anyway, <laughs> it's up to you to find this ship and dis but will you discover a dark secret while trying to locate the resolution? So, the plot is really good and it is quite interesting. It has some unique twists and turns and it has a nice little mystery to it. And it will build your interest in this in the mission's plot while you search for the lost ship. It's not just, oh, I gotta find a ship that's gone missing, because we've seen that tons of times. This time it's got a unique twist that's gonna happen to it that will totally be like, oh, what's going on here? And that was nice too. Uh, I did find it kind of predictable <laughs> on who the... There's like secret people in this mission, and I found it kind of predictable on who these people were, because it's been done quite a bit. That's the only problem I probably would throw in with plot, but... The characters were good and well written. They have a nice unique feel to each of them so they don't all feel the same, which is good. And uh, their dialogue is well written so it will keep player interest because it is a wordy mission. But like the secret guy kind of feels like his dialogue totally fits with his personality. The Cleon totally has well written Cleon dialogue and stuff like that so that's good to see there. I Actually touching that Cleon as a Cleon player um, I, I did find the I think it's I think it's actually two Cleon captains we encounter on a mission isn't it? Um, I, I can't remember. It was just the one. It, I think there's. Ezra, now that you mention it, there's probably two. Yeah, the, uh, the two Klingon captains. Those dialogue were well, well written and I really good. Completely believed that they were Klingons. There were a couple of uh, iffy things because of the way the character works, mm -hmm. um, which actually is fully believable saying that. But uh, generally, yeah, I, I really did like the Klingons and the way it all worked. There were no canon contradictions in this mission, and there was some minor touchstoning. Nothing major that tied in with the plot, but there were touchstoning on some past. Star Trek canon, kind of random, but it's there. And there's no spelling and grammar issues. Story scored an 8.39, 14th ranked in story. So it's a pretty decent story, and if you're looking for a good story to play through, this is a great one to play through. Now on to technical. Here's what we have to say on that this week. There's some good maps. Most most of them were pre-made, but you do get some nice customization on, like, one, it's a base you will go to throughout the the, uh, in the mission, and it was pretty nice customization there. When you first beam in, it's like, whoa, this is a sweet corridor you go into. So that was cool to see. The transitions were good, but because this is a long mission, depending on how patient you are, or if you can tolerate a longer mission, you'll get different responses from the transitions. Again, we, we had more of an issue with it. I didn't. But 
it, your, your responses from different players could vary. You have to go into this with the mindset yeah. that you do need a longer window to play this mission. And, and that can affect the transitions. Because if you're already like, oh, this mission's taking a while, and you're sitting at loading screens for quite a bit, that's going to sway your opinion on that category there. The author showed great knowledge of the Foundry with no real issues in this mission. There were some things that he could have chosen to do better. Me and we, we had a debate on this, which we'll get into a little more when we get to Foundry limitations on whether some of these are limitations or it's just author choice. But uh, there's, a, there's a point where you have to go talk to four of the contacts on the base, and you kind of have to go to one, then go to the next, and go to the next, and then go to the final one, even though they're right next to each other. And it is possible that you could probably talk to them all in a certain order, whichever order you picked, and then progress to the next contact. Uh, there was great art asset usage, though, in creating some of the environments like that base I mentioned. That's cool to see, too. I believe the space map was also customized, right? I think it was. I forget. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was actually really heavily customized. I think um, there was only the one space map, but it was repeatedly used. Yeah. And you had to go to different places during the map. So you're all it, over it the place. Was well, it was actually well placed. I mean, generally those space maps are overcrowded. But in this one, it's actually believable because the, the way the asteroid fields works and the way the planets are separated, it was actually believable to be like this own little in-system planet with its rings or something around it. It was actually pretty good, yeah. Yeah, so wh wherever he used his art assets, because some of them were just pre-made maps without much changes, but wherever he used them, he did a great job in using them there. Mm -hmm. Good instructions throughout the mission with waypoints and clearly written uh, mission objective dialogue, so that's good because we've been playing a lot of missions where the mission objectives didn't clearly state where we're going, so it was good to see that again finally. So then there was a little bit of a debate on the foundry limitations and whether they were really foundry issues or more author issues. Uh, we, we really had the, uh, the, the issues on the foundry limitations here, so I'll let him cover it while I drink my beverage. Well, basically, there were a couple of things I noticed throughout the mission. The first one is actually on the initial map. It, I know you, you and I must be debated about this, uh, mm -hmm. whether it is kind of a limitation or kind of author preference. It was a group of Five or, six, five or six ships, but half a dozen ships to a dozen ships of... Uh, a nice Klingons. mini fleet. And, yeah, a uh, nice mini fleet, led by a Klingon Voku carrier. Now, the problem with that, that is the fact that all Vokus in Klingon mobs are dreadnoughts, but because the way the foundry limitations work in the foundry, there are no dreadnought level groups in any of the mobs. They only go up to battleships. And in this mission, the Vokub is a battleship. Now, this was what sparked the debate. Is it limitation or is it author preference? Because I get the impression it was kind of a limitation. Because I've noticed quite a few authors um, with, with different types of battleships, like Bortasks or Vokus or Odysseys, they've put things like as the battleship groups, because that's all as far as they can go. We can't put them as dreadnoughts. And it's, it's that kind of a thing. Was it a limitation or was it not? Mm hmm. And then um, you had uh, another issue that uh, we discussed quite a bit, too. I forget what that was, though. Do you remember? Oh, right. Yes, of course. The objective. Um, on the, f the initial Federation map you have to go to, there are multiple NPC contacts. Oh, yeah. You can talk at the same time. And the thing about the fact, this fact is that there is a little option in the foundry to complete all, to talk to this person and this person, this person, this person, all at the same time, and then you can complete the, the whole objective at the same time. Now in this mission that doesn't happen and you have to talk to each one individually sequentially along the way. Now it's the same type of idea but they're not grouped together and that was the problem. And you're forced to talk to them in a certain yeah. order. It's not like interactive objects where you can click on these two interactive objects or these four objects at the same time to progress that objective. NPC contacts don't work that way. They work separately. Mm -hmm. they, they can't be grouped together. So, it, it, again, both are debatable. It's, it's up to you whether you want to classify them as limitations or not, but I did get the impression that both were limitations. Um, so, it, that kind of a thing, it's, it's kind of debatable, but you, yeah. So, so, technical scored a 7.29, 16th ranked in the technical category, so still pretty decent. Now, I think I hear a dragon calling. Let's send the Game Master Wee Wee in to tell us how the gameplay was. That was the most interesting yeah. transition ever. Never do that voice again. Anyway, space gameplay was functional. There were some interesting things to achieve during the mission, but generally there was nothing much beyond the standard interactions in Rich Markers. I think the primary fault, I wouldn't really call it a fault really, it was more like um, an inconvenience in this. It was a lot of moving about in space. 
it, we both felt that it dragged the space gameplay score down a bit, and it, as it seemed, we circled the planet at least twice. I mean, granted, it was the same map, but we we went all the way around it and then all the way around back around it again in another copy of the map. So it's like. I've already been here. I don't want to go back this direction. Uh, uh, Some people just stars. really hate flying around in space. Yeah, it, it it gets quite draggy in some occasions. I mean, okay, story purposes forces you to go in that direction. I mean, to rendezvous with a derelict ship or something, for example. But um, it's this type of case there. But again, moving around is kind of the battle for some people. Uh, space combat was very, very engaging. Both of us liked the multi-stack groups throughout the maps to make up some very interesting combat, plenty of variety in the ship skins themselves being faced. We don't actually often see this in final missions um, because what this is, it's like a variation. For example, take a Negvar and the variant, I forgot what it's called now. One There's of those mobs I had to kill was a variant of the Negvar that a player can use. We don't see that. We just don't see that. It's, it's, either, a, it's either this or it's that or it's that. We never see any alternate skins. It's actually a really phenomenal thing I've seen. I, I don't think we've ever seen that before in any final mission. Yeah, and, the, and they're named too. Most of the ships throughout the mission yeah. actually have names, which is kind of cool to see. They all have names, yeah. And it's actually very well thought out. It kind of reminds me of, I think it was Not Our War, wasn't it, with all those named ships there? <laughs> this is Klingon. And uh, me as a Klingon player, kind of like that. But um, there is a final combat on the space map, and it was very, very engaging, as it is very enjoyable for those who enjoy the epic DS9 battles. He actually and calls it the Battle of Karat. It feels like the Battle of Karat. It's so cool. It really does. There are multiple groups on both sides. I mean, there are a hundred different things. Well, not quite a hundred, but a lot of different things to shoot at. And good for AOE attackers like my Akira. So, uh, very, very enjoyable. Uh, ground gameplay was generally interesting. A bit of variety in the tasks to do for the player throughout the mission, which spices it up a bit. Like, the progression of the mission, quite, quite zoos, like scan this Jeffrey's tube or... What do we do about this power con? We have plenty of tasks to do. I like that. But there are no optional dialogue for NPCs or optional interactions from objects present. I think this really could have improved the gameplay aspect quite a bit. I mean, all it is, it's just the objective. You just do this objective, then the next one. But what do you do in between? I mean, I could have a few contacts telling me the, a bit extra information. Or I could use this console to tell me a bit more as well. But there was none of that. Kind of a shame, really, because I felt this really could have boosted it up quite a bit, actually. What did you think of that, Mo? Um, we don't see that a lot. I can see where you like that, because some of our top-ranked missions sometimes have a lot of that optional stuff in between. And mm. I could see this mission, yeah, I, I, I picture it, like, if you're over on that starship and you walk by a console, if you could interact with it and figure out some extra stuff, maybe to add into the story or something, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, it would, yeah. So, optional... optional stuff like NPCs and interactable objects, a thumbs up, so try to include that in the mission. Uh, ground combat was engaging, light space combat, multi-stack groups that are present for interesting challenges for the general player. It's mentioned in the dialogue, however, that of KDF allied species, such as Gorn, Nausicans, I think Orions was mentioned at one point maybe, um, that are present on a few occasions. It's indeed true, we do see them in this, in this uh, mission, but they only go as far as to reskin the commander or captain level part of the mob. We never see any alternate allied mobs, like gone, full gone mobs, or full Norskin mobs. We never see any of that. It's always a reskin of the commander. Meaning it's the Klingon abilities. It, it, yeah, it, it does the Klingon abilities, but I also find it ironic considering it's the Klingon Empire. Why isn't the Klingon on top as the captain and the Norskins are gone below him? Yeah. Yeah, uh, debatable. I know I'll, I'll probably get a few pot shots of my bow for this but it, again it's ugh, it doesn't really make sense for general player in my opinion at least i'll be honest i loved the ground combat in this mission because it was nicely stacked there were points where i was getting flanked and i had to like reposition my uh my crew and stuff it was definitely well thought out in in that aspect okay. of, the, of playing through it so some people yeah. could have some difficulty with it i can see but it's still generally fun yeah there were a couple of occasions where actually those mobs were stuck in a doorway and so either if you get too close, they just come running after you into the corridor, or you could bottleneck them with AOE abilities. I mean, for example, I, as a science player, use the physicist kit, so I could literally light them on fire as I stun them with my gravitational shift. It was rather fun, but for tactical players and engineering players, they could probably do the same thing with, like, mines... Plasma and, uh, grenades! And, uh, your case, you will be 
no, it make no difference because he looks like anyway. But um, <laughs> there was a puzzle part of the ground gameplay. But it was kind of mediocre. I mean, I don't know about you, much, but I can't, it wasn't huge, really. But I don't know about you, but I didn't. It didn't really appeal to me as some of the other puzzles. I mean, the general gist of it is to reroute power on the corridor and you know to progress to the next stage through the ship. But the puzzle doesn't provide sufficient information to complete it for the player so that they can think about it rather than trial and error approach where you're just clicking this dial like, oh, it didn't work, or go back. This is that kind of a situation. It's it's like. You can give it to your boff, which is a really nice touch, by the way. We do see that on a couple of occasions on the final mission we've reviewed so far, but the actual puzzle, if you try to do it yourself, is a trial and error. And mm -hmm. that's no fun at all, really, to be honest. Uh, I, I was fine with the puzzle, and in fact, I was glad it was... Uh, I didn't have a problem with it, and I was glad I didn't, because I was already pretty decent way through the mission. It's about over halfway, so I already have been playing for an hour. And at that point, you really don't want to get stuck on a puzzle, because you kind of just want to keep going and keep progressing the mission. Because again, yeah. uh, any mission over an hour, I think anybody's going to find it's taking a while, even if they're enjoying it. If they get stuck, that's going to really hurt. It's like, oh, I've already been here for about an hour, and now I'm stuck on this puzzle. I was glad I that's didn't actually, have that, at least. That's actually a really good point, that, that it, thinking about it... You, the way the puzzle was placed in the mission, it can be it's it makes sense, but it's kind of inconvenient really because mm -hmm. you've been playing it for so long. You really don't you really don't want something to hold you up like this. I mean, that's actually an advantage to the give it to your buff because you just like skip it, buff you do it, I'm the captain, go and do it. So, again, that kind of a thing. Uh, there is a bit of replayability in this mission. It's limited to alternate dialogues throughout the mission, but this dialogue can determine what type of captain the player is. I mean, for example, Murphy can be more social or um, I can be more like straightforward a staff that captain or someone could be like um, an evil person who wants to kill everything all the time but once an option is chosen there isn't really any further option to choose a different dialogue response it just becomes a linear dialogue section based on the response you've chosen so if you've chosen to be a social person you'll have social options if you're a staff that captain staff that captain if you want to kill everything you'll be going I want to kill you right now just get on with it basically mm -hmm. so the a few more, a few more choices along the way would be nice, but those options were really good. What's Generally our, what's our score? Seven point five, which put it in tenth place. That's still pretty good. Still pretty fun mm -hmm. gameplay. I definitely think combat-wise, awesome. I love this. I love the combat in this mission. I could totally see group. I think this is a single-player mission, uh, but I could see just people wanting to group together. This would be a great mission to try it out and see how that plays through because it was some great combat already solo player. And usually when you bring in more people, it's fun. So. But anyway, overall, what do we have to say, Wee? It's a nice mission for someone who's looking for a longer type of mission with story, with some interesting game aspects as well. This is a great weekend mission for someone with a larger gaming window because it's two hours. Yeah. Two hours of your time. I mean, you could progress it faster, like we did slightly, but it's really, it really yeah, is you, a long you mission. Want I would expect at least an hour. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I played this Friday night. And so, of course, it's Friday night. I don't have to worry about anything the next day other than this show. But it, 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 during the week, it, I wouldn't recommend playing this. But weekend, when you have tons of free time, play it. Because this is a great mission for somebody who's looking for a nice, good chunk of story and a good chunk of gameplay. It's very fun. So, uh, overall, 7.72 are 10th ranked. So, very good. And also a sham because we didn't have a tie. No ties, damn. I, I <sighs> liked our ties. We were going pretty well there, but... What was that record? Like five weeks in a row? I want to say five. Let's go with five. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was five. I think it was five weeks in a row. I don't know. We're on episode sixteen now. I, I don't know when we started. We we start. I think we started one before Christmas, and then yeah, the three every action. We can't count ten because we didn't do any new missions that so, week. It's five. Yeah, that's actually five. Yep. So, so quite a lot. Let's try and beat that in the future, shall we? Well, not try, but. Yeah, so you know so I mean. people who send us your missions. Send us with the intent of them tying with other people's, not surpassing, not being worse, tying. But anyway, let's move on to community feedback. And this week on Community Feedback, we asked you previous weeks, I believe it was two weeks ago, to send us your feedback on the situation brewing about the grinders versus story and blah. And it, it, the issues kind of died down, but we do want to cover your feedback. But l first, I want to start off uh, early, early this week. I think it started when we were actually publishing 
the last episode of Foundry Files. We shoot these on Sunday. We come out on Tuesday. So this was shot probably right at the beginning of this issue that happened this week where the forums just... <laughs> it was like crazy. It was grinders and storytellers at each other's throats. and it, it, it just got crazy. There were so many threads getting locked down or merged and stuff. You could tell... Brand Flakes was having a blast controlling that mess, but it was basically a bunch of uh, uh, upset grinders at the uh, blaming the storytellers for the fix, the timid fix. We covered that last week as well. And then the storytellers are like, oh, we want to pull down the grind missions, and it just got crazy. And I, I like to call it the Foundry Cold War because it wasn't actually fighting because nothing really happened. And honestly, I facepalmed at this whole thing. I was just like, really? We're arguing about this on the forums? It's like the temporal cold war. No fighting really happened. It was just a bunch of people going, oh, let's mess with these times, and they'll fight each other and blah. No, no actual war ever happened. It, 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 I don't know how you felt about this, Wee. I know I sent you the links, and you were just kind of like the same, oh, whatever. Well, I wouldn't ex exactly classify it as the temporal cold war, because I know how people can feel about that. But um, it, it, it was a rather intense argument really yeah because that's really what it was between the grinders and the people who actually made decent value missions and i know we've covered in the past we're we're heavily biased i'll admit it towards the, yes the foundry people i think we're both on the foundry people actually do decent story missions but there were a couple of uh, i think it was one or two people who actually emailed us in yeah we'll cover them in a bit we should we should really cover the other side of it like what is the other side of it? Why are these grind missions so beneficial for the general population? Well, yeah, we don't want to be like one-sided. Like Star Trek teaches us. Here we go. I'm going all moral on everybody out there. Star Trek teaches us that we need to view from both sides, and that's what the show does. It gives us all perspectives, not just like, oh, this one, this is the one that's right. So that's why we got to look at all of them. That's my moral lesson for you today, guys. I, I will do it next week as well. But yeah, so we got to <laughs> listen to me. I'm a, I'm the perfect moral teacher in that category thing but yeah so the other podcast covered all this stuff and it, it just went crazy I, I don't think i have anything other to say on it just no. the whole issue i had with people arguing over this is like you can't do anything about it it's really in the end up to cryptic to choose what goes into the foundry whether it's only story no grinds or both because we already know story is safe because that's what the tool is made for the problem mm -hmm. is we're deciding now whether grind missions have a place in the foundry or not well, that's that's the thing. We actually discussed about this uh, before the show. Yeah. Um, and the general opinion, I think, was that the the reason these grind missions came in was because the Foundry Daily came in shortly after the yes. launch in 2011. That's there now. That mission can't be taken away. It's not going to be taken away for multiple reasons. It can only be changed, really. But, so the ground mission, the grind missions are going to be here, whether people like them or not. So I think the solution is... Well, one, for those grinders who actually want the resources for like the star bases and the reputation and all that kind of stuff to get all the, the Zen points, to get things from the Zen store, that kind of thing, then the foundry is really a heavy source. Because, I mean, you could do that daily ever since that early 2011 and up until Season 7 when they change it to mm -hmm. repeatable. And that kind of a thing put the foundry into a position where it was the ultimate source of Dilithium and eventually fleet marks for the general population. And it also became the, a perfect way because you could go AFK while doing that stuff. And that's they, they, they try to squish it down. That's the part I really think is good that they squish down because you want people playing the game, not just kind of going, I'll walk away and let my character do it all. Now, the major debate here is between the story missions and the actual grinders where you actually just have to go around and shoot stuff all the time. So, But uh, should we get to some emails here that we got? Yeah, let's go. So uh, the first one, and a lot of people send this, and I just picked this one out because it was a new name and summed it up pretty nicely. Plus, there's an, an extra point I want to cover here because I love the idea. But uh, it's from Heisen, I believe. And basically, his idea was a foundry filter, which we've seen that discussed on both sides of the argument everywhere mm -hmm. because it makes everybody happy. Now, basically what the, the foundry filter is is tag system, which... We've probably talked from this show since day one, I want to say, because we we always we all hated the search engine, even if there weren't any grinders in there, because it's really hard to find different types of story missions. Like, I want to play a Romulan covert operation mission, or a Cleon warrior tar sacrificing mission. Those aren't going to be tags, but you get the idea. There'd be some way to separate those two, because they're barely different. But uh, there, there's a whole bunch here. Do you want to uh, cover some of this here, Wee Wee? Because there's a lot here. Uh, well, a few examples that could be is uh, player location, uh, whether it has any DOF assignments, 
um, that kind of thing. And generally, I think that tag idea is a good idea mm-hmm. for both sides, like you've mentioned. For the reason that is, like you just mentioned a few minutes ago, the grind missions are there to stay. That's obvious. So therefore, what can we do to work around them for both sides? And the answer is the tag system. Because then everybody doesn't want them. Yeah. Grinders, they, they, I know it would be kind of debatable, but they could put in a tag where it's labeled like um, a grind mission or something along those lines. Like a, something that people can use for the repeatable so they can get their resources and that kind of stuff. And I know that will probably spark a few lava pits. But um, because the way it'll just look like cryptic, <laughs> don't pass it on though. Because it will look like cryptic is supporting them. Now that's that's a point I brought yeah, up. Yeah, and I don't think they're gonna do it. Mm-hmm. They're gonna they're gonna make it kind of vague whether they like it or not. I have their, their I, feeling. I, well, I I I can't help thinking that's the only solution. because unless, unless something really reasonable. An alternative is presented to either me or you, Murph, mm-hmm. then I, I just really think this is the only solution as far as I can see. The only because other one I've heard. The different missions would give the answer yeah. to both sides. Now, the only other one I've heard is Foundry Moderators. I've heard that discussed in depth on uh, Podcast UGC. I've also seen it listed on the forums. And honestly, I, I'm kind of behind that, but the problem there is it's a lot of work. And it's kind of like the forum moderators. You want to have good people in that position, not just people who are going to go, oh, I don't like you, your mission's not yeah. even... No, nope, your mission's cancelled, I'm taking it off. You want people who are actually going to do their job correctly, and it's going to be hard to find that. Plus, you said yeah. it's a big task. It's, it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's an impossible task. Even if you had like people, a, a strong team of like 50 or 100 people, it's still going to be, as far as I'm concerned, impossible. Because the amount of founder missions that it's release per day or could huge. be potentially released per day is huge. I mean I wouldn't be surprised if the hundreds of thousands of founder missions out there right now waiting to be published or that kind of thing. And don't forget, free to play game equals alts. Yep. Alt accounts where people could just like if you run out of founder slots like Umuf could create alternate accounts and create more founder missions. Yeah. That's so the problem. I- I'm still getting behind the Foundry moderator do because I like it. And even if it doesn't do it 100% well, I think it's still good that... Because if we had a few Foundry moderators who were cleaning up the Foundry of some exploit stuff, instead of having to do an overall game change, I still think that would be good because at least before you didn't see the exploits and grinds all the way at the top of the list, they were kind of simmering in the bottom. They were in the background. They weren't the main focus. But with them being at the top of the top rate list, anything at the top of the top rate list is the main focus of the Foundry. And that's also the problem with the Foundry when you're focusing in on these grind missions, which is why I go on to the story side because the Foundry, whether people like it or not, it was designed to be a storytelling device. We could probably go back to every post Cryptic was making on it, every podcast when they mentioned it, and they were always tying Foundry into ways for yeah. players to tell stories. There's a reason why it was called U- UGC, User Generated Content, before it was renamed to the Foundry. There's a reason. The mm-hmm. Foundry was their place for people like us to tell stories in, st- in the Star Trek universe we've always wanted to tell. And back then, it wasn't all about yeah. the grind. It was They were making story content. Now, stuff has changed, and you know what? That's a great segue into this next one. Uh, 4X Gamer. He wrote in on our on the uh, Stow forums with the, uh, the opposite opinion. I do want to cover it because it's good to get both sides, as you probably learned from my moral lesson about 10 minutes ago. Unless you droned it out, then you should probably go back and re-listen to it. Wee Wee agrees with me. You should listen to that. But anyway... So he he's a player like many out there, and we know there's many because you look at the grind missions and you see all the reviews and they get and the thread we looked at. Mm-hmm. And and I asked him, what makes you like the grind missions? What draws you to them? Because I th- I don't know if you, you did you ever do like the the, the console clicky stuff back in the day when it was a daily yes because it was very simple. I don't do the repeatables anymore because it's not as simple. Mm-hmm. And that's actually one of the problems uh, that people had, the grinders especially had, with this new repeatable. I mean, okay, it's 30 minutes, but you have to play an actual mission to do it. Yeah. Because the way the XP, everything works nowadays. So it, there was kind of a drawback to it. They attempted to fix it, and we've actually mentioned it a couple of weeks ago. It made it worse. Yeah. Now, I, I never did any of that stuff because I'm playing a video game. I want to have fun while I'm playing through it, or else I'm going to go do something else. And that's my whole opinion here. It's my free time. I should spend it having fun. 
not oh, I gotta grind stuff, which is why there's tons of grinding in Stowe, and I don't do it anymore. I will log in and do the stuff that I find fun, the story content, the Foundry content. So, and that's probably why I'm a little more overprotective of the Foundry because it's one of the only things I do now in Stowe. So I'll do stuff that's fun. And grinds to me aren't fun because I'm not really playing the game and I hate grinding to begin with because we see it everywhere else in Stowe. Patrols, STFs, stuff like that. And I wanted to ask, why are the Foundry grinds more fun? And the answer I got is they're not more fun, they're just easier, which of course I guess is the answer we all should have expected because you could go AFK and he did admit to playing those. And I was glad he wrote back because it totally got me to see this side of the argument, which I think is a good thing to see. The, the reason why grinds are so popular is because everything out of the game is such a grind, and the foundry is the easiest way to do that grind, because the rewards are nicer, and a lot of them out there you don't even have to be around to play. And I, I still think there's a way out there you don't have to be around to play still, even with the fix yeah. they just did. Because you can another, still... Another benefit, another benefit of the foundry is that it's player-based. It's player-side. Uh -huh. They can create an easy, uh, easy mission that's uh, usable and just play it endlessly. Yeah. That's... It's so the only way they're going to really fix this is either they just outright say we're not accepting grind or stomp it down which again I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon that's not, that, that, can't, cause that can't happen simple, simply because they can't enforce it yeah I don't think they have enough people at Cryptic to enforce it unless they go the moderator route which again we just talked about that but the only way they could make it less interesting to do the foundry stuff is to have better grinds in the game to draw the players out of the foundry and into cryptic made grind stuff because when you look at the cryptic made grind stuff if i had to pick grinding i'd go with the foundry grind too because it's easier the other stuff i i'm bored of i don't i actually have to go around and just go f on new romulus gotta press f here and it's just ugh. and if you look at the rewards what are the rewards of the foundry daily is giving you you're getting fleet marks which everybody really needs for their star base because look at the requirements for that dilithium dilithium probably the most uh, prominent resource in the entire game i mean look at the dilithium exchange points. You can tell by that. I still like it. I like it too. I mean, the only problem now is I, I spent all my dilithium on Zen because it was like, ah, uh, toss it out, buy a whole bunch of lockbox keys, sell them. But anyway, back on topic. And then if you get all the loot drops from these missions, you get tons of EC, which of course everybody needs because if you look at the reputation system, how much EC are you using? Tons. Mm -hmm. And I found myself getting stuck because I used all mine up because I'm not one of those huge exchange players. And a lot of people aren't. And if they aren't, well, how are you going to get your ECs? Loot drops. Easiest way, Foundry. So, the only way to fix the, the issue I see is, again, affecting the whole game. New content. Are we going to see new content anytime soon like that? Eh, probably not. We'll, we'll have to see. But, anyway, uh, that was... I don't know where this is going to go in the future. I hope it goes somewhere better than it is. I, I, I think the, the one thing... Mm -hmm. The next news piece I think we'll cover on this is going to be search tags. That's how I feel it's going to be. I don't feel it's going to be yeah, completely taken out, but I feel search tags is the way it's going to go in the future. I don't know where you think it's going to go in the future, Wee. Uh, just, just the tag system. Just tag system. The system. I really can think of, yeah. There's no way to get rid of them, either by removing the daily, which won't work, because they have the entire community mm -hmm. on, their, on their backs, or by trying to enforce it, which, like I said, is impossible. So the only reasonable approach is to use the tag system, which I think... It was discussed by a couple of days before. It's actually uh, a long-term feature, isn't it? So it will come eventually, hopefully. Mm -hmm. But how soon is the question? Yeah. I'll be interested to see, though, how Neverwinter handles this. Because I know they're going to beta soon. And I want to see how grinds work over there. In fact, I might just go over there and try to make a grind mission and see what happens. Because if they find a way to actually fix this issue other than just the tag system, I wonder if that would get into Stow anytime soon. But anyway, we don't want to spend any more time on this issue because we've covered it for three weeks, so unless something major happens, that's the end of this boundary discussion topic, but we'll hopefully have a new one for you guys soon, and then we'll ask for your feedback on that. We'll discuss and see what we're going to talk about. But anyway, one more community feedback thing I wanted to mention. Boundary Roundtable podcast had started up just uh, early this week. They had a brand flex on. That was cool to see. And they, it was just a bunch of Foundry authors that got together and talked about missions they were making, missions they were playing. Uh, they discussed stuff on the Foundry, just like kind of like our Foundry discussion segment. And then uh, that was about it. Then they had brand flex on later on to... to um, blah, what's the word? He was <laughs> to uh, describe the spotlight changes and 
features and stuff. You go listen to it. It's a good hour uh, long show, and I, I really enjoyed it. I I told Wee he has to go watch it because it's awesome, and it's gonna be cool because they're gonna be rotating different like Foundry authors on all the time because it, it's just. Foundry authors getting together to discuss. So if you're a Foundry author that's interested, go check that out. We'll have the link in the show notes where you can wa- check out the show. And there you can probably find their email there. But email, I think we have an email, we, we, don't we? We have an email address at foundryfiles at gmail.com. Oh, what do we use that for? For community feedback. The segment we just discussed about, actually. Oh, for any cool. feedback or suggestions on like the show or any ideas for the foundry, that kind of stuff. Or importing emissions, of course. Probably yep. the most important for the considering the, our review, review segment. Um, don't pass your lack of talking onto me, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Also, uh, we're syndicated over on Stoked Radio now. I think I mentioned that a few episodes ago, but just want to plug it again because you can check out all of our past episodes there. You can also check out Stoked Radio for general gaming news. I know they just had a big episode over there. I don't know if you caught it. I have to catch it. They had like tons of interviews and whatnot, and they're already ramping up for a Daniel Stahl interview, so that's going to be some cool stuff to see. And I, I've been talking with Mav because Vegas Con's coming up, and we were down there last year, and that was fun, and there's going to be a lot of cool stuff. You were down there last year. You weren't. I meant Mav and me and a bunch of others. You should show up, though, but he's in Britain. Did you go to the, the London Con? No. Oh, you should go to London Con, dude. Get some pictures and stuff. But anyway, thanks for tuning in to Foundry Files this week. And if we can speak next week, clearly, without stuttering, we'll see you next week. Uh, the characters were good and well written. There's a good variety in them of them in the mission. I can't talk today. Why can't I talk today? I have talking issues. Probably the cheese fries and bacon pizza I had yesterday. Yeehaw! This is a blooper right here. Future is Murphy, it? do it. Hi, yeah. Future Murphy. That guy's a dick. Anyway. The characters are good and well written. They have... Oh, I'm reading the wrong bullet point here. <laughs> I start reading plot. Here, space, and I won't do the wrong thing. Oh, gosh. I wonder what would have happened if they sped everybody up in that. That would have been funny. Talk like Alvin and the Chipmunks. All right, here we go. Debate on foundry limitations. Three, two, one, go. So then, uh, here, no, that's not how I want to intro it. Uh, I still can't talk. I thought I could talk after that pizza, but I think I'm too hungry still. Here we go.